A safety data sheet SDS, material safety data sheet MSDS, or product safety data sheet PSDS, is a document that lists information relating to occupational safety and health for the use of various substances. SDSs are a widely used system for cataloging information on chemicals, chemical compounds, and chemical mixtures. SDS information may include instructions for the safe use and potential hazards associated with a particular material or product, along with spill handling procedures. SDS formats can vary from source to source within a country depending on national requirements. A SDS for a substance is not primarily intended for use by the general consumer, focusing instead on the hazards of working with the material in an occupational setting. There is also a duty to properly label substances on the basis of physico-chemical, health or environmental risk. Labels can include hazard symbols such as the European Union standard symbols. The same product e.g. paints sold under identical brand names by the same company can have different formulations in different countries. The formulation and hazard of a product using a generic name may vary between manufacturers in the same country. Globally Harmonized System The Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals contains a standard specification for safety data sheets. The SDS follows a 16-section format which is internationally agreed and for substances especially, the SDS should be followed with an annex which contains the exposure scenarios of this particular substance. The 16 sections are Section 1 – Identification of the substance, mixture and of the company, undertaking 1.1 Product identifier 1.2 Relevant identified uses of the substance or mixture and uses advised against 1.3 Details of the supplier of the safety data sheet 1.4 Emergency telephone number Section 2 – Hazards Identification 2.1 Classification of the substance or mixture 2.2 Label elements 2.3 Other hazards Section 3 – Composition – Information on ingredients 3.1 Substances 3.2 Mixtures Section 4 – First Aid Measures 4.1 Description of First Aid Measures 4.2 Most Important Symptoms and Effects, Both Acute and Delayed 4.3 Indication of Any Immediate Medical Attention and Special Treatment Needed Section 5 – Firefighting Measures 5.1 Extinguishing media 5.2 Special hazards arising from the substance or mixture 5.3 Advice for firefighters Section 6 Accidental release measure 6.1 Personal precautions, protective equipment and emergency procedures 6.2 Environmental precautions 6.3 Methods and material for containment and cleaning up 6.4 Reference to other sections Section 7 – Handling and storage 7.1 Precautions for safe handling 7.2 Conditions for safe storage, including any incompatibilities 7. 3. Specific end uses Section 8. Exposure controls, personal protection 8.1. Control parameters 8.2. Exposure controls Section 9. Physical and chemical properties 9.1. Information on basic physical and chemical properties 9.2. Other information Section 10. Stability and reactivity 10.1. Reactivity 
10.2. Chemical stability, 10.3. Possibility of hazardous reactions, 10.4. Conditions to avoid, 10.5. Incompatible materials, 10.6. Hazardous decomposition products, Section 11, Toxicological Information 11.1. .1. Information on Toxicological Effects Section 12, Ecological Information 12.1. Toxicity 12.2. Persistence and Degradability 12.3. Bioaccumulative Potential 12.4. Mobility in soil 12.5. Results of PBT and BPVB assessment 12.6. Other adverse effects Section 13. Disposal considerations 13.1. Waste treatment methods Section 14. Transport information 14.1. UN number 14.2. UN proper shipping name 14.3. Transport hazard class S 14.4. Packing group 14.5. Environmental hazards 14.6. Special precautions for user 14.7. Transport in bulk according to Annex 2 of MARPOL 7378s and the IBC Code Section 15. Regulatory information 15.1. Safety, health and environmental regulations, legislation specific for the substance or mixture 15.2. Chemical safety assessment Section 16. Other information 16.2. Date of the latest revision of the SDS. National and international requirements. Canada. In Canada, the program known as the Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System WHMIS, establishes the requirements for SDSs in workplaces and is administered federally by Health Canada under the Hazardous Products Act, Part 2, and the Controlled Products Regulations. European Union Safety data sheets have been made an integral part of the System of Regulation EC, No. 1907-2006, REACH. The original requirements of REACH for SDSs have been further adapted to take into account the rules for safety data sheets of the Global Harmonized System GHS, and the implementation of other elements of the GHS into EU legislation that were introduced by Regulation EC, No. 1272-2008 CLP, via an update to Annex II of REACH, the SDS must be supplied in an official language of the member states where the substance or mixture is placed on the market, unless the member states concerned provides otherwise Article 31 of REACH. The European Chemicals Agency HA, has published a guidance document on the compilation of safety data sheets. Germany The German Federal Water Management Act requires that substances be evaluated for negative influence on the physical, chemical or biological characteristics of water. These are classified into numeric water hazard classes WGK or WHC, depending on whether you use the German or English abbreviation. WGK and WG, non-water polluting substance WGK1, slightly water polluting substance WGK2, water polluting substance WGK3, highly water polluting substance. South Africa This section contributes to a better understanding of the regulations governing SDS within the South African framework. As regulations may change, it is the responsibility of the reader to verify the validity of the regulations mentioned in text. 
As globalization increased and countries engaged in cross-border trade, the quantity of hazardous material crossing international borders amplified. Realizing the detrimental effects of hazardous trade, the United Nations established a committee of experts specializing in the transportation of hazardous goods. The committee provides best practices governing the conveyance of hazardous materials and goods for land including road and railway, air as well as sea transportation. These best practices are constantly updated to remain current and relevant. There are various other international bodies who provide greater detail and guidance for specific modes of transportation such as the International Maritime Organization EMO, by means of the International Maritime Code and the International Civil Aviation Organization ICAO, via the technical instructions for the safe transport of dangerous goods by air as well as the International Air Transport Association IATA, who provides regulations for the transport of dangerous goods. These guidelines prescribed by the international authorities are applicable to the South African land, sea and air transportation of hazardous materials and goods. In addition to these rules and regulations to international best practice, South Africa has also implemented common laws which are laws based on custom and practice. Common laws are a vital part of maintaining public order and forms the basis of case laws. Case laws, using the principles of common law are interpretations and decisions of statutes made by courts. Acts of Parliament are determinations and regulations by Parliament which form the foundation of statutory law. Statutory laws are published in the Government Gazette or on the official website. Lastly, subordinate legislation are the bylaws issued by local authorities and authorized by Parliament. Statutory law gives effect to the Occupational Health and Safety Act of 1993 and the National Road Traffic Act of 1996. The Occupational Health and Safety Act details the necessary provisions for the safe handling and storage of hazardous materials and goods whilst the Transport Act details with the necessary provisions for the transportation of the hazardous goods. Relevant South African legislation includes the Occupational Health and Safety Act of 1993, the National Road Traffic Act of 1996, and the Standards Act of 2008. There has been selective incorporation of aspects of the Globally Harmonized System GHS, of classification and labeling of chemicals into South African legislation. At each point of the chemical value chain, there is a responsibility to manage chemicals in a safe and responsible manner. SDS is therefore required by law. A SDS is included in the requirements of Occupational Health and Safety Act, 1993, Act No. 85 of 1993, Regulation 1179 dated 25 August 1995. The categories of information supplied in the SDS are listed in SANS 11014-2010, Dangerous Goods Standards, Classification and Information. SANS 11014-2010 supersedes the first edition SANS 11014-1-1994 and is an identical implementation of ISO 11014-2009. According to SANS 11014-2010. The Netherlands Dutch safety data sheets are well known as Veleheidsinformatieblad NL, Veleheidsinformatieblad or Chemiakarten. This is a collection of safety data sheets of the most widely used chemicals. The Chemiakarten Boek is commercially available, but also made available through educational institutes, such as the website offered by the University of Groningen. United Kingdom in the UK, the Chemicals, Hazard Information and Packaging for Supply Regulations 2002 known as CHIP Regulations, impose duties upon suppliers, and importers into the EU, of hazardous materials. Note, Safety Data Sheets SDS, are no longer covered by the CHIP Regulations. The laws that require a SDS to be provided have been transferred to the European REACH Regulations. The Control of Substances Hazardous to Health COSHH, regulations govern the use of hazardous substances in the workplace in the UK and specifically require an assessment of the use of a substance. Regulation 12 requires that an employer provides employees with information, instruction and training for people exposed to hazardous substances. This duty would be very nearly impossible without the data sheet as a starting point. It is important for employers therefore to insist on receiving a data sheet from a supplier of a substance. 
the duty to supply information is not confined to informing only business users of products. SDSs for retail products sold by large DIY shops are usually obtainable on those companies' websites. Websites of manufacturers and large suppliers do not always include them even if the information is obtainable from retailers but written or telephone requests for paper copies will usually be responded to favorably. United Nations the United Nations UN, defines certain details used in SDSs such as the UN numbers used to identify some hazardous materials in a standard form while in international transit. United States In the U.S., the Occupational Safety and Health Administration requires that SDSs be readily available to all employees for potentially harmful substances handled in the workplace under the Hazard Communication Regulation. The SDS is also required to be made available to local fire departments and local and state emergency planning officials under Section 311 of the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act. The American Chemical Society defines Chemical Abstract Service Registry Numbers CAS numbers, which provide a unique number for each chemical and are also used internationally in SDSs. Reviews of material safety data sheets by the U.S. Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board have detected dangerous deficiencies. The board's combustible dust hazard study analyzed 140 data sheets of substances capable of producing combustible dusts. None of the SDSs contained all the information the board said was needed to work with the material safely, and 41% failed to even mention that the substance was combustible. As part of its study of an explosion and fire that destroyed the Barton Solvents Facility in Valley Center, Kansas, in 2007, the Safety Board reviewed 62 material safety data sheets for commonly used non-conductive flammable liquids. As in the combustible dust study, the board found all the data sheets inadequate. In 2012, the U.S. adopted the 16-section safety data sheet to replace material safety data sheets. This became effective on December 1, 2013. These new safety data sheets comply with the Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, GHS. By June 1, 2015, employers were required to have their workplace labeling and hazard communication programs updated as necessary, including all MSDSs replaced with SDS formatted documents. SDS authoring Many companies offer the service of collecting, or writing and revising, data sheets to ensure they are up to date and available for their subscribers or users. Some jurisdictions impose an explicit duty of care that each SDS be regularly updated, usually every three to five years. However, when new information becomes available, the SDS must be revised without delay. See also Canadian Center for Occupational Health and Safety Dangerous Goods European Agency for Safety and Health at Work Fact Sheet Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals International Chemical Safety Card Materials Database Data Collection System MSD Sonline requires subscription. Risk and Safety Statements. Health and Safety Executive, UK. References. External links. SDS Google Search, hosted by the University of California. SDS MSDS Database. MSDS search engine SDS search engine MSDS SDS comparison